Welcome back, Akira Bike Project fans. We left off the last update with some steering column modifications and some changes to the footrests. And next up, we are going to remove that CX500 engine, get it cleaned, and start the engine rebuild. The bolt on rear assembly here is to make engine removal easier and more convenient. There's extra room here allowed for future modifications as well, such as rear suspension and for further experimentation with my drivetrain. So the engine removal was pretty easy and I got the CX-500 out and on top of my bench. The CX-500 was produced by Honda during the late 70s uh, up until the mid 80s and was quite an innovative platform for its time. Notably it was the first production liquid cooled motorcycle engine and had electric only start with a low maintenance shaft drive and dual CV carbs. It was reliable, compact, and powerful platform in a unique transverse V-twin arrangement, and is quite popular now in cafe racer builds. But this is a 40 year old engine now, so I'm often asked why I chose to use the CX-500. The transverse V-twin layout, which is rather uncommon in the motorcycling world, makes for a longitudinally compact design, and since the engine is sitting behind me, the shorter it is, the shorter the already long wheelbase is. I also love the look of the transverse V-twin platform with the engine heads popping out of the side right behind the rider's back. And imagining the exhaust sweeping forward and down and then back up is quite intriguing. I like the look of the platform and I really like the Moto Guzzi V-twins for the same reason. The CX is a nice platform that also comes in 500, 500 turbo, 650 and 650 turbo variants all in the same platform with the same mounting points. Since this is a prototype and I'm testing out a lot of new things here, I want to be able to start with a more reasonable engine, but one that was easily upgraded to more powerful options without requiring any significant rebuilding of the bike. The CX-500 comes in at about 45 horsepower, but put a 650 turbo in there and you can hit 90 to 100 horsepower depending on your tuning. Although these are getting a little bit hard to find now, but at the very least I'll be upgrading to a regular 650 for additional testing. I was spending almost 2000 a month for the shop and utilities, leaving very little left over for actually working on the bike. It was also almost a 45 minute drive to the shop despite being about 10 miles away, thanks to Seattle area traffic. So my wife and I started looking for a house with a shop. In the aggressive Seattle area market, this wouldn't turn out to be easy. After over a year of all this, we finally found and got the perfect place. With a 2,000 square foot shop, fully insulated, well lit, easy access, tons of electrical power, and not far away, I was ecstatic. Oh yeah, the house is pretty nice too. With that, it was time to pack up everything and move again, but this time would be the last. We moved under the eerie orange skies of the Pacific Northwest smoke haze. We moved everything in the shop, truckload by truckload, and dozens of trips later, most of it was out. Everything was unloaded and packed into the corner to make plenty of room for the forklifts to come in and unload the big knee mill and lathe. I built some heavy duty pallets for the jet lathe and knee mill and hired a rigging company again to come out and move them. It's quite an endeavor moving these things, and it isn't cheap. The forklift itself is loaded onto the truck as well to help unload at the destination. I got the knee mill and lathe into their final positions. With that, I got to work on setting up the shop again. My father came out to see the new place and wire up my shop again. I settled on a shop layout that would split the shop in half into a metalworking area and a separate woodworking area both surrounded by workbenches and tools. I got started on expanding the workbench setup, which had been languishing for some time. All the waist high benches were extended to full height benches with shelving on the top for storage, and many more two foot by four foot benches were built. Over on the woodworking side, I built another eight foot bench and extended the existing eight foot bench up to full height, adding pegboard on one and flat whiteboard on the other. I started plumbing the whole shop up with airlines with a drop about every eight feet. 
I connected the benches to the walls and then connected the benches to each other at the top, filling in any gaps between benches with 2x4s. I put OSB and scrap plywood across the top of all the benches connecting them all together and adding plenty of storage space up top. Each bench got its own 4 foot fluorescent or LED light fixture in it and each got its own pair of power strips. I added some white trim across the top connecting all the benches together to give things a little cleaner, more consistent look. I put together my shop, computer, and workstation area next and put a shelf on the top which would become my inspiration shelf. Finally, I think I was ready to start getting back to work. I started next on an engine test stand to make rebuilding and testing this engine along with rebuilding other CX's much easier and more convenient. The engine test stand starts out as a simple steel square with vertical posts to the engine mounting bolts, all of it sitting on top of a heavyweight rated Lazy Susan from McMaster Car. I started out by cutting out the pieces for the base and the vertical posts on the chop saw out of one inch thick wall steel square tubing. Next I cleaned and beveled the end of each piece on the grinding wheel and then I cut four pieces of tubing on the benchtop lathe with the lathe cutoff tool to weld to the ends of the vertical posts and hold the engine mounting bolts inside rubber grommets. I marked and drilled some pilot holes in the posts on the small drill press to prepare them for drilling with a one inch hole saw. I then ran them through with the hole saw, leaving the rounded receptacle to house the pieces of the round tubes I cut off earlier. A regular hole saw from a local big box hardware store run through the lowest speed on your drill press with plenty of lubrication will do all right in mild steel tubing. And I cleaned the edges of those newly cut pieces on the grinding wheel to prepare them for welding to the round tubes I cut. They looked pretty good, so I jigged them up in a vise, turned on the welder, and tack welded the edges. I put all the pieces in place with the engine, supported on some wooden blocks to check the alignment and get ready for welding. I went ahead and tack welded the posts with the MIG welder, rotating sides and corners to minimize distortion. I removed the engine from the base and cleaned the tack welds to prepare it for final welding. I then did the final welding on the clamped down base, again rotating faces and corners and edges to minimize distortion. With that, I put the engine back into the test stand base and put the engine in base onto the Lazy Susan on the workbench. Well, that completes the first step of the engine test stand. This nice rotating platform makes cleaning, inspecting, and disassembling and testing the CX much more convenient. And I'll likely be working on many CX engines. This turntable is rated for 750 pounds and costs less than 20 bucks at McMaster Car. And it really makes things a lot more convenient and looks pretty cool seeing the engine spin around on it. I finally picked up a new air compressor as well. I hadn't had a decent one that could even keep up with my plasma cutter since the really nice one I left back in Connecticut. This 80 gallon Husky had a nice deal going at the Home Depot. Here you can see it next to my current air compressor. Well that is it for this update. In upcoming updates we'll also get into disassembling and rebuilding that CX500, finishing that engine test stand doing some major frame updates, and building a full-size recumbent motorcycle rotisserie frame jig. I'd like to thank my patrons again, and if you like this project, please consider becoming a patron. I make pennies off of YouTube monetization, so your contributions will help tremendously and will help accelerate the project for just for the price of a cup of coffee per month. Remember here, this isn't a one-off show build. It's not a superficial chop a scooter in half and paint some cardboard red build. This is a build that aims to exploit the full potential of the recumbent motorcycle platform to lay the groundwork for manufacturing a unique new vehicle platform 
and to do true justice to Otomo's vision in the real world. So please consider supporting the project. Every little bit you contribute helps and goes directly to this extraordinary goal. Thank you, and I'll see you again soon.